Okay, all 11 fans of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, I think it's about time for a new episode, don't you? Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Anyway, who among you recognises this contraption that I've made? Well, those of you who have been following my videos for a very, very long time will probably remember that this is my high voltage power supply slash MOSFET driver that I've made. It uses a rewound microwave oven transformer to provide us with about 30 volts at considerable amperage. <sighs> and I should really take bigger breaths before I start to speak. And there's another transformer here which powers the oscillator for flybacks and Tesla coils and things like that. Well, I've only got the oscillator in there to power up flybacks, but basically the way I use the circuit is that this transformer provides the main power. This one here is just a ballast that I can switch in and out when it's needed. So I can power up a MOSFET from this big transformer here and control the MOSFET with this little circuit here. And I can pretty much power up flybacks and things like that. Except, I really am not getting much power out of this transformer. Even with the primary connected directly to the mains, so there is absolutely nothing inhibiting that supply, I'm just not getting very good output from this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these bulky microwave oven transformers which makes this thing weigh an absolute ton and not very efficient. And I'm going to replace that with a switch mode supply. So this thing will be lighter and be as powerful or maybe even more powerful than what I get from this transformer. Now, originally what I was going to do is take these two computer power supplies I have here, modify them so they give out a little bit more voltage than they would normally do say about 16 volts for each power supply then connect them in series so i get about 30 volts but then i thought you know maybe that's not the best idea putting two of these in series with higher voltage than they should be doing and at considerable amperage something in there sooner or later is gonna fail catastrophe however you say that last word so instead what i'm going to do is I'm going to design and build my own switch mode power supply from scratch. Yeah. And we've got some good parts in here. Got some capacitors, which I'm sure are still good. A couple of switch mode transformers there, which I'm sure at least one of those is going to come in handy. So this is the design I'm going for. Some of you may recognize the circuit. It is a half bridge. And why is it called a half bridge? Well, we've got these two MOSFETs forming half of the output stage here, and these two capacitors forming the other half of the output stage there. And these two resistors just ensure that these two capacitors get charged with the equal voltage, because you don't want more voltage on one capacitor than the other. That could really ruin your day. Now, I wanted to use a TL494 to drive the MOSFETs, but unfortunately, Although that chip will be able to work this MOSFET absolutely fine, for this MOSFET here, it would be completely, absolutely useless. And I'm not going to go into exactly why that is. So, I'm going to do a little bit of research and see if I can come up with anything better. Okay, well, done a little bit of research and I found this circuit. And this is what I'm going to base my switch mode power supply on. So, here is my design. Cool Dude Clem's design. The best design in the history of uh, designs. Well, anyway, you can see it's pretty much the same circuit. We've got the rectified mains coming in here. I haven't bothered to draw in the filtering or the rectifiers because I just really want to focus on this part of the circuit. Well, first we've got this little thing here, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Decided to use the IR2153D chip, which is the more modern version of that chip. It has that diode built into it, so I won't have to put a diode here. So that's going to be one less part on my part list. And the output transformer, because I only need single rail output for this, I don't need dual rail output. Fired it in this configuration, but I've added regulation to this circuit. That's this little simple thing down here. 
Uh, what is that you're asking? Well, I've got an op amp which is configured as a comparator. So we feed a little bit of the output into the non-inverting input. And by adjusting this variable resistor here, I adjust the voltage that's going into the non-inverting input. I think I said non-inverting input here, I meant... No, wait, that is non-inverting input, that's the inverting input. I'm getting myself in a bit of a muddle here, so yeah. Feeding a little bit of the output voltage into the non-inverting input, and then to the input inverting input. I mean the inverting input, I will get this right in a minute. A 10k resistor basically just controlling whatever voltage goes in there. And basically what that's going to do is, when the output gets above a certain level, depending on where I've set this, the op amp will basically turn on its output, and that's going into this opto isolator here, which is going to short out this capacitor. And if I understand the data sheet properly, that will temporarily disable the chip, and the output voltage will start to fall. And when the output voltage falls below a certain level, remember, which is set by this variable resistor here, the op amp will basically turn off. So this opto isolator will not be doing anything anymore. So this capacitor won't be shorted anymore. And the chip will re-enable and the output voltage will start to rise. That is if this chip works the way I think it will. And I have experimented with putting an opto isolator across the capacitor to make sure it has no effect on the capacitance and it has no effect at all. So that should be okay. The data sheet specifies that I should use a MOSFET here, but I'm going to use a opto isolator that way I don't have to have so I don't have to have my rectified main zero volts connected to the ground because that could be a little bit bad anyway that's about it for this video um in the next video I'm going to be building it and testing it I'm actually going to build two of those and I'll get into why that is later on but for now that's it for this video I'll see you in the next video in a couple of days when I've got the circuit built and I'm testing it and, and until next time goodbye